Autobots roll in for yet another box office smash hit. Audiences are thrilled with a bazaar of tantalizing thrills that exploit everything known to man. But is Michael Bay's third film anything more than hype over visual bombardment? Find out right now on Movieology. Sam Witwicky is caught up in yet another epic confrontation between the alien Autobots and Decepticons. Once humans and Autobots learn of a special technology that could change the fates of us all, it's a race against Megatron and others to get the technology before it's used to change everything as we know it. But as allies and allegiances are tested to the verge of self-destruction, who knows who can be trusted or what the universe will allow? The Transformers War threatens to end all intelligent life and intelligence itself. Transformers Dark of the Moon stars Shia LaBeouf, Rosie Huntington-Whiteley, Josh Duhamel, and many others. It was written by Aaron Kruger and directed by Michael Bay. Welcome to Movieology, your ticket to engaging the spectacular world of film from the bedrock of biblical truth. I'm Joseph Darnell. So as an old Transformers fan myself, I... Oh, I can't do it, okay? Uh, I, I, since the Transformers movies, no. I, I cannot, in good conscience, wear this shirt. No. Okay, yeah. All right, this is infinitely better. I can live with myself. Okay, let's get this analysis over with. To quote Optimus' words at the beginning of the film, we were once an intelligent race of mechanical beings. Then came the war. Then it's also all downhill from these lines to the end of the film. Keep in mind, this is not the Transformers we grew up with. Not to praise the merits of the cartoons or comics. I want you to understand that th this movie has little in common with the other Transformers mythos. Now, I'm not reviewing all Transformers mythos here, just the, this particular movie. It is relatively true that Transformers 3 is better than Transformers 2, Revenge of the Fallen. Technically, the cinematography is easier on the eyes. Story elements are more cohesive. The special effects are just as good, if not better. Stupid banter between pathetic excuses for comical relief are significantly reduced to a minimum. But this is saying very little. It's not enough to be better than arguably one of the worst movies of the decade. This movie is such a royal mess of convoluted story that's true to Michael Bay's worldview. True to his postmodern form, Michael means not to adhere to anything. Nothing is endeared for too long. Nothing can be trusted. Nothing is real enough. Nothing is valid or concrete. Everything we know about reason, religion, and science can be thrown out to make way for unfiltered relativism. Anything goes. No, wait. I'm not even sure that there's allowance for that dogmatic statement. We're not really sure, because after all, postmodernism doesn't believe in any specific value. Just the melting pot of continuously changing culture. Dark of the Moon is an uninhibited, patternless shot in the dark of who knows what's going on. It goes without saying that you should review this movie for content before seeing it, but let's be clear. As far as I'm concerned, this movie is one of the worst displays of violence and base sensual depravity of the year to date. Guised in pop culture style, we are supposed to swallow many exploitations of fleshly indulgence. The story's success is dependent on giving you the roller coaster ride of a lifetime, a ride of gratuitous evolutionary proportions. The message we hear loud and clear is that everything you know should be questioned. You shouldn't trust businesses, the government, your education, the military, the United Nations, all your allies, your family, your girlfriend, your comrades in arms, men and women's roles in society, electronics. There's not even honor among criminals. Everything you thought you knew about the moon even can't be trusted. Ironically, if there is anything we can rely on, it is the predictable actions of the enemies. 
The Decepticons are the only ones that are predictable that you can count on. One of the significant twists involves Sentinel Prime, a character introduced in this film. He's pitted against Optimus as the older, transcendently wiser Autobot. In a turn that makes little sense, he defects and joins the Decepticons because Megatron is on the winning side? Sentinel gives his rationale for turning sides, but Optimus has no refutation to offer. Instead, Optimus is consistently postmodern in that he doesn't identify with anything objective or truthful. The one time Optimus trusts in someone, it burns him. Optimus tells Sam, I told them who to trust. I was so wrong. Just remember, you may lose your faith in us, but never in yourselves. What we then learn shortly after this is that we shouldn't even trust Optimus because he was lying to Sam at the time in order to do what he thought was right. That being said, allowing Decepticons to take over the city of Chicago and kill thousands and gain a huge upper hand is highly irresponsible for Optimus' character. Let's take a moment to thank our sponsor. If you care about the sanity of us all, you will want to learn all you can from American Vision. They have invaluable resources for history, apologetics, eschatology, and worldview studies. As a Movieology fan, you are treated to 10% off all purchases at AmericanVision.com when you use the coupon code HOLLYWOOD during checkout. For Christian movie enthusiasts, I recommend you check out the message behind the movie, which you will find at AmericanVision.com. In an attempt to get spiritual, the story references many religious qualities. Sam is called the savior of the world many times. Sam's girlfriend is nicknamed Angel, and the Transformers are called gods repeatedly. Soldiers seek sanctuary in a church. As is consistent with postmodernism, this is a deconstruction of religion applying the supernatural to the human condition, minus absolutes and God himself. The evolutionary basis of the Transformers' existence leads straight into the chaotic mess that is relative postmodernism. I give Transformers Dark of the Moon one and a half stars out of five. It's plain bad, but I agree that it's worth watching if there's nothing else available and you're too lazy to do something else better with your time. Or if you feel the need to expose yourself to something horrible to recalibrate your appreciation for good movies and to remind yourself of how bad a film can be. I am definitely going to avoid watching this film again. All that said, the box offices are demonstrating that Transformers is the type of movie that sells tickets. Like roller coaster theme parks, it's a bombardment of the senses that urges audiences to live by natural impulses, not to even trust emotions, because that leads to good tastes. If you've seen this film, I would love to know why. No, sorry, I'm just kidding. We'd like to see your take of it in a comment. Remember to watch the show online at movieology.tv, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, sign up for the e-newsletter, and please do us the biggest favor, share Movieology with your friends that like to discuss movies. I'm Joseph Darnell. Until next time, thank you for watching Movieology. To quote Optimus' words at the beginning. <laughs> that didn't sound right. <laughs> there are so many puns that one could do with Transformers. Yes, let's roll out. He's got like a cavity in his head. I think Michael Bay had a matching cavity in his head when he was making this film. Spectacular world of film from the... the, 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 the. Rosington, ah, I love Rosington. Rosie Huntington. Sansumors, more than meets the eyeballs. Autobots rage their battles to destroy the evil forces of the Decepticons. Not anymore. Not since Michael Bay.